Thanks for staying with us. In a significant setback to Nigeria's burgeoning tech industry, reports suggest that Microsoft is considering the closure of its African Development Center based in Lagos. This move, if confirmed, would have profound implications for the country's technological landscape, potentially impacting job opportunities and innovation in the sector. We have with us uh, this morning Mr. Frank Eleanya, an economic analyst and company analyst at Tech Cabal. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure being on the show. It's scary to me, uh, just considering the fact that Microsoft might fold up or they're going to sack a lot of people or whatever they're going to do. There are so many people that might come from Microsoft into the labor market and it scares me because it's not only Microsoft but so many other um, Bold, for instance, uh, this morning we had uh, the story that uh, they downsized a particular department from 45. They removed 22. So only uh, 23 people were left in that department that needed, before now, 45 people. Now we're seeing this from Microsoft. Let's just get what you feel about it, first of all. Frank, can you hear me? Frank, can you hear me? The national player, um, every thing to Microsoft uh, is not very surprising. Um, it was, um, if anything, some of us would say it was, uh, it, it, it was long in coming. Um, uh, we seem to be finding problems with the network of Frank Elena. Uh, we're looking at the fact that uh, Microsoft uh, might be downsizing, might be folding up, might be whatever it is that they might be doing is a very scary to a, a lot of us. We're seeing everywhere companies folding up and so many things happening in the labor market. People are now thrown back into the labor market. Uh, Microsoft is closing Nigeria Center and that means about 200 jobs are at risk. 200 jobs, 200 families, 200 people. Yeah a host of friends that are attached to that, extended families that are start to, attached to that and all that. Frank, are you back? We, were, we lost your audio yeah, at back. some point. Okay. okay. So I, I was saying that um, the market has been very brutal to every business. So whether you are a local player, whether you are uh, an international player, no matter how much liquidity you have, uh, no, no matter the size of your company, um, you're bound to feel the pinch um, in the long run. Uh, Microsoft has been in, in the country for um, so many years now doing business in Nigeria, but um, that, there comes a point where they have to sit down and press the calculator and ask themselves, look, um, does this still make sense to be in this market, um, considering the headwinds, considering the, um, uh, the enormous cost that they are having to um, uh, um, bear from doing business in Nigeria. So um, at the end of the day, if you look at it, and then you look at also what you're making, what you're making from the market itself, if it doesn't make sense, it's time for you to, to start packing your bags. Um, it, it, it's, not, it's not a charity organization. Investment is not charity. It is about uh, um, returns. So if your shareholders ask you what What's up with this market where you are in? And then you can account for profits. You can account for any um, significant um, return. Then it is time for them to, you know, start looking um, in the, in a different market. And and interestingly, Nigeria is the only market that they are um, leaving. So they're not folding up. They're just divesting from the Nigerian market. They are still in Kenya. They've got a big office in Kenya. Um, they are still in South Africa. You know, and all uh, and in in different other African uh, markets, but it's unfortunate that Nigeria's situation has forced them to make a very difficult situation uh, um, 
make a very difficult uh, decision. Yeah, but apart from the fact that um, uh, people might be losing their jobs, about 200 people might be losing their jobs, what does it say about the, um, the, the tech industry in Nigeria? That's one of the fastest growing industries in Nigeria, and we were doing really well. If Microsoft leaves, uh, we're not even only afraid of Microsoft leaving or worried about Microsoft leaving. We've heard about very big oil firms also trying to leave and all that. But like you said, the economy is biting everybody. But if Microsoft leaves, like I asked, what will that say or what, what, what will that do? What will be the impact on our growing tech industry in Nigeria? What Spain is going to do is it is, it is going to impact investor confidence in the Nigerian market. Um, last year, the tech industry struggled to um, make uh, or attract investment um, out, out of the big four. We're talking about Kenya, we're talking about Nigeria, South Africa, and Egypt. Nigeria was like uh, in the fourth position for the fourth time in a very long time, you know, and um, and that's uh, and that's because investors uh, are beginning to reevaluate. Um, their position in the market, how viable is, is the market. Now, things like this does not boost that confidence. Um, it doesn't help the tech um, ecosystem as well. Now, imagine that a company as big as Microsoft is leaving because of headwind. What the fate of the smaller tech, um, tech startups that are left in the country? You know, or, or they're still in the country. You know, everyone is, is uh, struggling. If, if you've been watching the news, you hear a lot of uh, cases of uh, uh, companies that are okay. shutting down or that are reevaluating their positions, revising their strategies. You know, just to survive the market. And a lot of them are now beginning to expand out of the country. Now, when you hear expansion, don't think expansion is they're going to attract them for an investment into the country. No. They are, they are running away, actually, that's the real word. They are running away from being exposed to the um, this institute of the economy of the country. So that's why many of them are expanding. So when they attract funding now, or if an investor comes to you now to give them money, the next thing they're going to ask is where are you as in divesting to or in, um, expanding to because they want you to be out of the place or go to a place where you can assure them that you will bring returns to their investment. So that's the only way um, tech startups are going to attract money these days. It, it, it also, uh, we've heard cases about startups now that are operating in India, operating in the UK, expanding to different markets that we've never even heard of. That's because they are trying to help their position. They are trying to survive. Yeah, well, now we are losing the market to other African countries. And um, uh, what we lose, others gain. And I don't know, exactly. but, but what can we exactly. do as a, a country to, to, grow, to grow our technological space? You know, Microsoft is not Nigerian. How can we have home, homegrown um, uh, technology hubs and all those kind of things so that uh, we, may not need, we may not miss Microsoft as much as uh, uh, we would if we don't have these things? Well, it, it's, it's not doing the basics. Uh, which we have said several times, you need to do the basics. No matter what you want to tell investors um, globally that Nigeria is ready for investment, they are they have eyes in the market. They know what is really happening. So first of all is, have you done your homework? Have you created an enabling environment? Now, the kind of environment that we have currently isn't enabling at all. Look at the drama that has followed Binance and the cryptocurrency market. Which investor in his right mind will want to invest in, in, in a market like Nigeria where things can be sprung up uh, at you uh, on the whim? You don't even know when it's going to come. Do you understand? So it, it, it's difficult for you to be convinced to go to that market when you, when you can see what's happening to uh, people like Binance. Yesterday we heard that um, um, from Binance CEO that the government was trying to bribe or, or claim that the government was trying to bribe, um, bribe them so that the case would go away. Those kind of things have uh, a way of soiling your image on, on the global space. If you wanted to come to Nigeria, you start thinking, no, if the government is even involved,
involved in the scam thing or, or just running scam companies and otherwise I want to go there, they're going to do the same to me. And there are no cases or there are no stories that sort of debunk this kind of claims um, that, Binance, uh, that Binance have made. When instead of what you hear, uh, more companies come out and say, oh, it happened to us as well. You know, so those kind of image sensing doesn't help us. So first of all is that we need to create that environment that helps everybody have confidence in this market. We need to be intentional in the way we deal with businesses. We need to, it, it, it cuts across um, federal, state, and local government. Because if you, if you give somebody a license at the, uh, uh, at the CAC, they come into the market and start operating. They go to a state like Lagos, and then somebody comes from one agency and says, well, oh, you're, you're owing us this and, and all that. It doesn't help them um, um, to operate. So it is a distraction for everyone. And it needs to be dealt with immediately. You know? So that's what um, we have been saying so far. Yeah. So <clears throat> investment in Nigeria is, is scary. It's scary. But the Nigerian government is going everywhere and telling people that uh, our country is safe enough, our country is good enough for investment and all that. Uh, but uh, someone, yeah. someone posted that um, one of the things that will affect us uh, as a country and especially Lagos as a state, which is, you know, like the biggest economy in Nigeria, is indiscriminate demolitions and so many other things that may not look as if they are related to to what we're talking about but in lagos state this government yeah. can wake up one day give you 48 hours and demolish your property and someone said it's going to impact on investment in lagos state do you think so too so so those are things you know um those are things that you need to do you can't you, you can't have that kind of um, testimonials coming out from your market and you expect uh, people to pat you on the back and just carry money and come and give you. Um, long gone are uh, the days when people just invest because, oh, the market is bad. Oh, the market, uh, there is uh, uh, 200 million people that we can leverage on potential, potential. It's not, no, nobody's looking at your potential. It's what have you built in? What can we trust that you, uh, that when we come to your market, this is stable? This is predictable. Investors like a predictable environment. If I build my house, would you, as in, would, would the license you gave me to build it, would, would the license you give me to, to build it be, um, would, 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 would it be tenable when another government comes in? You know, and this is which is what uh, families are facing now, businesses are facing now, their properties are. Yes. You know, because it's not just Lagos, it's other states are, are, are also um, guilty of the same thing. If you, if you give them opportunity, they will still do the same thing that Lagos did. You know, because we don't have a structure that, um, that is predictable. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. We lost uh, audio a little bit. Uh, we lost okay. you at, uh, we don't have a structure. That's the last thing I heard. Okay. So we don't have a viable structure. Well, the network doesn't <laughs> you, seem to be. You understand? So uh, no, nobody wants to get in that kind of market. Nobody wants to be in that kind of market. And... It, it, when you say these things, it looks as if you're attacking the government because uh, you don't like the government or something like that. That's not the case. They see that there is something happening. They will come. Everybody loves money or to make money. But that's what we're doing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, the, the audio seems to be very unfriendly, or the, the network seems to be very unfriendly, and we're getting very distorted audio from Frank Elanya. We're, we sincerely apologize for that. 
maybe we'll just have to discontinue with this, but uh, the point has been made. A hostile environment cannot encourage um, investment. Uh, an environment where you cannot predict, an unpredictable environment cannot um, encourage investment in a country or in a state. So the government should do something about it. Let our economy be stable, let there be security, let there be uh, a predictable uh, in business environment so that people can come and invest. Nobody wants to invest in a place where you do not know what the outcome will be tomorrow. At least you, have, you could have a projection if the economy is stable. But now we don't know where the dollar is going. If the carriers go where we don't know. And then we don't know uh, <laughs> what anything is happening. <laughs> Frank, I don't know. Our, our audio was really uh, terrible. But I, I'd like you to just give us a, a final word. Uh, how to uh, how to handle this? I I, 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 I think I, I, I think the government needs to get their hard choice. It, it is it is becoming very frightening. The 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 environment is going to fall. Hmm. Okay. It will come in. It will not come in. Mm. Okay, that, that's the, because of the distorted audio, we'd love to discontinue at this point. Frank, if you can hear me, would like to thank you for coming on oh, the okay. this morning. Yes, I, I said, the, 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 the audio is, okay. really, is really terrible on this end. Frank Elanya is an economic uh, analyst. He's a company analyst also at uh, Tech Cabal, and he was talking to us about the uh, on the issue of Microsoft uh, folding up uh, from Nigeria and uh, putting about at least 200 jobs at risk. Okay, so uh, this is where we wrap it up on today's show. I uh, would like to thank you so much for being a part of the show and hope that you're going to rejoin us tomorrow for another edition of the program. Until then, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Have a lovely midweek.